Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibade with the Brain and Body Foundation. Today, we're going to be talking about arthritis, and we have another special guest. Well, I wouldn't call him a guest anymore because he's, <laughs> he's a part of the house. Uh, we'll be having Dr. Roti again on, but uh, before we get into the discussion, I want to talk about, uh, well, arthritis. Uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, I was discussing with Dr. Ronti, that uh, if I were to come back into this world again and I was to choose a field in medicine, I would probably choose orthopedic surgery because <laughs> that has to do with the bones, has to deal with the joints. And everybody, pretty much everybody, when you get to the age of, you know, 35, 40, you begin to have that, you know, wear and tear. Uh, of the joints and you begin to have that pain here and there and of course it's the orthopedic surgeons that you know really cash in when when these these things begin to happen especially those who deal with sports sportsmen and sportswomen so that's it's it's a big it's, it's a big issue worldwide arthritis is uh, no matter what happens as you grow older because you're using those joints over and over over and over and over again eventually wear and tear will set in but it's not just about wear and tear there are infections uh, there are what are known as autoimmune conditions there are there are um, well sports injuries and like we mentioned before so there's a lot to do with arthritis and as you can imagine uh, uh, part of the problem has to do, do do with drug abuse because when those when that pain becomes unbearable, people tend to look to drugs just to dull the pain, and that can be a big, big, big problem. Another thing that we see is that some sometimes there's this gap between you having severe pain and not being ready for surgery. Like the orthopedic surgeon will say, yes, this is bad. It's a really bad, your knee problem. For instance, your knees are really, really bad, but he can't do surgery because it's not bad enough. <laughs> as far as you're concerned, it's as, as bad as it can be, but the orthopedic surgeon, they cannot justify doing surgery or, or knee replacement on that joint because it's not bad enough. So you are left in limbo. You're left struggling, trying to uh, live with that bad knee until it becomes bad enough for the surgeon for the surgeons to intervene. Well, we have good news for you. We're going to be talking about what you can do uh, to, uh, shall we say, uh, manage or even to overcome that joint problem. So uh, we will be right back. Take a quick look, listen and um, don't go away. Bones provide support for the body and aid in its movement. The place where two or more bones meet is called a joint. Joints may be immovable, slightly movable, or freely movable. A synovial membrane surrounds movable joints. Inside the membrane, synovial fluid lubricates and nourishes joint tissue, such as cartilage. Articular cartilage is a tough, slippery covering on the ends of the bones, which allows smooth joint movement. Joints give the body flexibility, precision of movement, and help in supporting the body's weight. Arthritis is any disorder that affects joints. It can cause pain and inflammation, Rheumatoid arthritis is the second most common type of arthritis. The joints most commonly affected are in the wrists, hands, knees, ankles, and feet. It typically occurs at the same joint on both sides of the body. It can also affect other organs in the body, such as the eyes, skin, heart, lungs, kidneys, nervous system, and digestive tract. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder. This means the body attacks itself by mistake. In rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system attacks joint and organ tissues, Here's how it happens. The white blood cells of the immune system move into the joint. They release chemicals called cytokines, 
which attack the cells of the synovial membrane. These chemicals cause synovial cells to release other destructive substances. They also cause the synovial membrane to grow new blood vessels and form a thickened area called a panis. Over time, as the panis grows, it invades and destroys areas of cartilage and bone inside the joint. Inflammation causes fluid buildup in the joint, making the joint swell. Eventually, without treatment, the joint space narrows and ankylosis can occur. Ankylosis is fusion, or growing together, of bones in the joint. This results in the loss of the ability to move the joint. There is no cure for rheumatoid arthritis. However, doctors commonly prescribe various combinations of the following medications that, when taken together, can reduce inflammation and pain and slow down joint damage. These include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, steroids, and standard disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, or DMARDs. If standard DMARDs aren't working, doctors may prescribe newer drugs called biologics, also known as biologic DMARDs. Physical and occupational therapy, along with low-impact exercise, can increase muscle strength and help keep joints limber. For severe rheumatoid arthritis that has not been helped by other treatments, a doctor may recommend a surgical procedure. For example, a joint replacement procedure, also known as an arthroplasty, may be recommended. For joints that are difficult to replace, joint fusion, also known as arthrodesis, may be recommended. During this procedure, the joint is removed and the bones are fused together with bone graft. Another surgical procedure for severe rheumatoid arthritis is a synovectomy. During this procedure, the synovial membrane surrounding the joint is removed. In some cases, an arthritic joint may need to be replaced with an artificial joint. All right, welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Ranti Ogun, our good friend, sir. Welcome here again. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. So, arthritis, big problem. Yes, absolutely, because it is so common and uh, prevalent in the society. Yes. Uh, the thing is that um, most people just hear arthritis and we think it's uh, a one type of disease, a singular entity. Mm -hmm. However, there are many types and the types go back to how the arthritis manifests. The definition of arthritis from the name is to say that arth, arthro, the joint, joint, is inflamed. So arthritis is joint inflammation. Joint on fire. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many reasons that a joint can be inflamed. Primarily from injury. There are two types of injury. One is a one-time injury, like a sports injury. You hear about football players on the field. They mm -hmm. have a collision with their knees, and all of a sudden, they have an injury there, mm -hmm. and the, which may require surgery. Mm -hmm. But that is the beginning of consistent inflammation mm -hmm. of the joint. Ongoing. So mm -hmm. that is probably one of the primary traumatic causes of arthritis. Okay. However, the most common uh, cause, traumatic cause of arthritis is consistent or regular, repetitive micro trauma. Micro yes. trauma, okay. So in other words, this is something that is happening every day on a small scale, but each each time it happens, it uh, gives, you know, it builds upon each other. Mm -hmm. 
And so the microtrauma, repetitive microtrauma, is the second traumatic cause of arthritis. Okay. Remember, arthritis is inflammation of the joint. Mm -hmm. So now, in the case of traumatic, um, repetitive trauma, repetitive microtrauma, as the trauma is happening, the inflammation will not abate. Right. So now we've talked about one source of, or one cause of, of arthritis. arthritis or joint inflammation. Right. There are other causes, particularly the other most common cause is metabolic. Okay. In other words, what we eat as we metabolize it, it will collect in the joints. And as it collects in the joints, it will cause inflammation. The most common one or the most the one that is most commonly known is gout. Gout, right. Or what we call they used to call it in the old days King's disease. King's disease. Yes. For the royalty, huh? Yes, because <laughs> the cause of gout is rich food. Uh huh. So when you indulge in rich foods over a period of time, there's a likelihood that gout will set in. Is that rich protein foods or rich fatty foods? Uh -huh. That is the question. Uh, <laughs> protein, fats, yeah, it's not, there's three, you know, types of uh, nutrition, protein, fats, carbohydrates. Uh, and carbohydrates. However, it is actually the type of food or the combination of foods that causes this problem. Ah. In other words, plenty of red meat mm -hmm. is, has been indicated mm. as being one of the reasons that uh, we will have metabolic arthritis. Mm -hmm. um, rich foods, chocolate, mm -hmm. alcohol, mm -hmm. um, yeah. all of these kinds of things will oh. cause metabolic arthritis. Okay, so, so we have two now, traumatic, uh, where, uh, traumatic traumatic arthritis and metabolic. And metabolic. Okay. And then there's another one that we that is a, is a result of autoimmune disorders. Uh, that the body's the immune body's immune system is fighting against the joints, yes, is attacking the joints. Exactly. Okay. So what will happen is that the body's auto the body's immune system is trying to correct whatever it is that is causing joint inflammation. However, the process itself involves inflammation. Mm. And so it will kind of accelerate and build upon each other. And, and the signals get crossed yes, and, and end up... continues to get worse. Got it. A very common type of uh, this kind of um, um, arthritis, autoimmune arthritis, is rheumatoid arthritis. arthritis. Right. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that causes inflammation of the joints of the body to the point that we will see swelling and we usually see it mostly in the fingers to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then the fingers will be very painful mm -hmm. and uh, we'll begin to see swelling of the knuckles mm -hmm. and the joints of the hands. Right. And restriction of movement. And restriction of movement. Right. Absolutely. So... In standard conditions, standard cases, a patient goes to the hospital or they go to the doctor, the clinic or the pharmacist, and then they give medication. Usually, like, start with the, the, the lower, the lower, lower, shall we say, CADA, where yeah. it's done the, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Absolutely. Like and felt so in popularly used aspirin in arthritis. And all that. And, and, of course, the risk with those is that um, some people who, have, who are more prone to ulcers will not do well with that. Absolutely. Because it could mix the ulcers and gastric, gastric bleeding, bleeding worse. But for others, it works just fine, and they don't need any more. But if for those... Who, that it doesn't work for, or those who cannot take anti, uh, non steroidal anti inflammatories, they go on to a, a stronger medication, uh, maybe steroids, right? Uh, I'm not an orthopedic surgeon, so we, we, we but, but uh, do, are you aware of any others other than the non steroidals and the steroids? Okay, now when arthritis begins, if we're lucky or if we're in tune with our body, yes, which we should be. Uh, the matter is how in tune are you with your body? Are you in tune to know when a disease is starting? Mm -hmm. Are you in tune enough with your body to know when you are feeling some things that you normally do not feel? Mm -hmm. 
in the case of arthritis, it's manifested by joint pain. Mm -hmm. So there are some things that we can do apart from medication okay. that will benefit us before it gets to the point where we have to indulge in medication or even go for surgery. Mm -hmm. So what are these things? Well, number one, remember we've said that there are three types. There's traumatic, uh, autoimmune, and metabolic. Mm -hmm. The autoimmune we probably can't do much about. Autoimmune disease is something that is genetic. Mm -hmm. It is part of us. So preventing that or dealing with that is a little bit more complex. Mm -hmm. However, traumatic, we need to stay away from trauma, those things that cause us trauma. If you remember, I said that traumatic uh, arthritis is split into two. We have um, micro trauma, repetitive mm -hmm. micro trauma, and we have one time trauma that is an accident, mm -hmm. such as uh, some kind of, uh, you know, incident on a sports field or right. during work or something that we do. So these things are easily avoidable by maintaining good posture and good. Um, method of application of our body okay so that's very very vague okay. <laughs> so we're going to have to look into that a little bit more okay. uh, because we want to know okay maybe it has to do with the way you're holding the racket yes. or the way you're sitting down or exactly. the way you're walking or should we raise our leg maybe when we go to bed yes. elevate our limbs let's let's look at some really specific practical approaches to doing that okay okay so well, I'm, we're gonna to have to take a quick break here All doc right. sorry take a quick break the uh, our producers already given us a warning so we will be right back <laughs> All right, welcome back. Okay, so Doc, we know that the most, the sites most affected by what you, micro trauma, right? Uh, arthritis due to micro trauma, wear and tear. Uh, the knees, the hips, the, the ankles, the ankles, and shoulders. the shoulders, which we, can, we use a lot and all that. So let's talk about common ways to ameliorate, especially what, like you said, when it's just beginning to happen what yes. people should need to do yes well, let's, let's start with the knees first all right the knees now most commonly when we see uh, arthritis osteoarthritis in the knees it's due to repetitive micro trauma person that bends consistently bends at the knees consistently and probably is lifting weights okay. consistently yeah either they are farming or any kind of thing that requires them to repetitively bend mm -hmm. and lift. Mm -hmm. This kind of thing will eventually, if not done correctly, lead to micro trauma of the knees and inflammation of that major joint. All right. So what do we do? We have to make sure that in our lifting procedure, bending procedures, we follow a certain pattern and we make that pattern a habit. And the thing to do is to make sure when we bend at the knees, we bend fully. Okay. And then when we lift, if the reason we are bending is to lift something, then we lift with our leg muscles, not with the back. It's funny that I would say that because we're talking about the knees. Mm -hmm. And we're saying if you lift with the knees, one thing that is very important that we have to note is that the more that we use a certain part of our body or we engage in a certain activity, the more capable the body becomes at doing such activity. Therefore, we must do it correctly. Mm. And lifting or bending at the knees correctly is important. We cannot stay in that position too long all right, Doc. So let, let me quickly jump in here. Yeah. Maybe I should be the one to demonstrate it on because you tell me what people are doing wrong and, you t and then like when you say li li using the back to lift as opposed to using the... Right. Uh, uh, what, 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 what does that mean? Okay. Um, some people will bend at the waist. Uh -huh. 
to lift something from so the ground. So they'll bend, bend like this? Yes. Okay. To lift something from the ground. By doing so, not only are you putting pressure on your back, uh, but you're also straining your knees because okay. you are not bending your knees. Okay. So, so what should so I... So that what should strain I, what? in the knees yes. will eventually lead to arthritis. So what should I do in osteoarthritis? So, so what you should do is to bend at the knees. So if I'm going to pick something up, I do this. Yes, that's a good one. Like I so pick it up like and this. Pick it up and come and back. As opposed to like that like this. exactly. Because really? by doing that one, you are straining the knee joint. You're straining all the ligaments and tendons that are associated with the knee. Okay. And this can lead to inflammation. Hmm. The more commonly that inflammation persists. Yeah. The worse the arthritis will get. So I should bend like this. Just again. Are you guys getting it? I should, I should be a model or something. I should <laughs> like this. <laughs> uh, and if it's something that you want to lift with your hands, uh -huh. both hands, then okay. you should squat. You should squat like this. Yes. And then pick it up. Pick it up and stand, and stand. with your legs. Exactly. Okay. As opposed to bending forward okay. and lifting up. All right. Wow. Did you guys get that? Boy, I need a round of applause for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So that's interesting. Okay. Sh shoulders. What? What? Uh, shoulders. What same. You... Same thing applies. Uh, in our shoulders, the shoulder is probably one of the most movable joints in the body, uh -huh. and so therefore we use it. And of course, we use our hands and our arms very frequently. Okay. We use them to do everything. Okay. So when we are using our shoulders, when we are using our hands, we want to make sure that we use them close to the body. Huh. The more extended our arms are, the more stress that is placed on the shoulders themselves. And remember, repetitive trauma hmm. is a cause of joint inflammation hmm. or arthritis. Hmm. So we want to avoid that kind of trauma. It's traumatic for you to lift your hand up like this. I remember back in the day mm. when they used to tell us to put our hands up like mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. as a source of punishment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so the longer you are in this kind of fashion or you are lifting like this, the more stress you are placing on the shoulders. I see. And as a result, the more micro trauma. I see. So it's something that we need to avoid. However, we need to use our limbs. Yes. And in using our limbs, we need to use them more smoothly and effectively. So when you want to lift something, let's say you want to lift something from the ground up, mm -hmm. a straight hand is not the way to lift it. It okay. must be bent. So bring it up. Yes. And then put it. All of this. Yes. Yeah, then put it up. Put it up to where you are putting it. Okay. If you are putting it above your head. Okay. Now. The more you can do this, the more the joints will be able to function effectively. The joints themselves, especially the large joints of the shoulders, the knees, the ankles, and the hips, are full of what we call uh, fluid. Mm -hmm. they, they have synovial fluid. fluid. Synovial fluid. Mm -hmm. And that synovial fluid is recirculated constantly. Mm -hmm. So these kinds of actions promote the circulation of synovial fluid. These are the things that we need to do consistently so that as we do them, our joints will be nourished and we can avoid joint inflammation. Got it. Okay, thank you, Doc. Sorry, they're giving me this signal again that the time is up. Oh, man. Oh, time is up? Uh, time is up. Yeah, <laughs> where, we still have quite a bit to where, talk about. Where does time go? I'm telling you. All right, folks, we're sorry we had to end it at this point. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will have Dr. Roger back to explain more about arthritis. But at this juncture, we do have to end it. And um, we will... Uh, if you want to get the videos, you can, of course, go to our website and the NTA website. But in the meantime, we will see you next week. And be sure to t continue to take control of your health because your health is in your hands. God bless.